Hey friends! In this video I'm going to show you how we can make a custom swatch palette like this one on the right that I call My Monster Colors, which is based on all the colors of the monster on the left. I've always wanted to do this, and I was a little bit surprised when I researched how it could be done. Now wait a minute, how did we get a swatches panel over here? Well, that's because now we're in version 1.4, which was released in mid-October. As we can see here in the release notes, one of the improvements is that the Swatches dialog has a fresh new face. So we'll be taking a look at that as part of this video. The great thing about having a custom swatch palette is that I can capture branding colors or any other color combination that I want to use in different projects. So here I've got the tab closed and there are two ways to see it. First, we can go into View and then go down to Swatches. The first time you do this, you will probably see the Inkscape default colors, just like we have at the bottom. Then we can use the drop-down to see all the other swatch palettes that are available in the system. And I can navigate to the custom one I made to display that. At the bottom of this panel, you can explore the different settings in the right-hand corner, and on the left with the folder, we can actually import our own custom swatches. When I tried this, I noticed that the custom swatch would only be available for this project and not when I would open up a different one. Okay, I'll close this and show you that the second way to access these swatches is from the drop down arrow just to the right of all these tabs. We can just go down and select swatches from all these different choices. So now if I pretend that the monster on the left is not available for me to sample colors, I can pick parts of the new monster on the right and use the swatches to color those parts. So this new swatches view in 1.4 complements what we already had in versions before. I've been using these swatches at the bottom all the time, and with this icon in the lower right, we've always been able to view all the other swatch combinations that were available. My new custom swatch palette shows up in this list as well. So when I did some research on how to make a custom swatch palette, I was surprised that it's not a new feature in version 1.4, but it's been available for at least four years, and other YouTube channels have covered this. So, in case you weren't aware of this either, let's cover it now. There are just three steps to make a custom swatch palette. First, we need to create a GIMP palette file with our custom colors. Second, we need to store that file in the Inkscape user palette directory. And finally, we'll need to restart Inkscape to be able to see the custom swatch palette. Now, all of this needs a little further explanation, so let's get to it. I'd like to show you where the standard swatch palettes are located, so let me bring up a file explorer, starting with my current project directory. We have to go to the directory where Inkscape is stored on our system, and in my case, on my Windows machine, it's in C, Program Files, Inkscape. And from there, I can navigate to the Share folder, then the Inkscape folder, and now the Palettes folder. And here is the standard list of swatch palettes that we just saw before. But notice, my custom palette is not in this list because I chose to put it somewhere else. These are, of course, system files, so I'd rather use the user palette directory that Inkscape makes available. Notice these are all .gpl files. Here's a post I found that explains that these are GIMP palette format files. These allow us to import custom palettes into GIMP and Inkscape. Here's a quick look at their format, and these are just plain text files with a special format. Now, if you're not sure what GIMP is, here is that organization's website. GIMP stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program. This is a free and open source image editor, and I like to use it all the time. You can think of it as the free alternative to Photoshop. Okay, now let's go find that Inkscape user palette directory. We can go into Edit and Preferences. And now this shows up in the right panels as well. We want to look at the System section, and down near the bottom is where the user palettes directory is located. I'm going to use the Open button to keep this directory open. And here is my custom swatch palette GPL file. Let's take a look inside. We can view it with any kind of text editor. In my case, I associated Notepad with this file extension. 
so it's simply a list of all the colors in this specially formatted text. Okay, now I've closed my Inkscape project and I've opened a brand new one so we can see exactly how to create one of these GIMP palette files. In my example, I started with a set of vector monsters that I imported from Vectezi. I've got a few notes on Vectezi in the description. So here's a motley crew of monsters and I'll move them off to the side a little bit. The import file was a .eps file, which is a vector file. And I can confirm that it's a vector by coming down to the bottom and seeing that it's a group of objects. Since I only want the orange one, I need to ungroup everything. Then I'll come down and select all the parts of the orange one and group that back together. Now I can move that off to the side and select everything else to get rid of it. Now what the heck is this other white rectangle that I just can't click and get rid of? It turns out when I imported this file, it gave me a second page in Inkscape. So I can just go over to the tools on the left at the bottom and go into the Pages tool, select this page, which is page 2, and delete it. Okay, now what we need to create the GPL file is our set of colors in Inkscape objects and only those colors and nothing else. Then we go up to File and use Save As. Here we have the option to change the type to a GIMP palette file. Then I need to give it a descriptive file name. And I'll save the file. My GPL file was stored in my project directory, so now I'm just going to copy it and paste it into the user palettes directory that I still have open. There we go. Now we can just shut down this new Inkscape project because we don't need it anymore. When we see this warning, we can just click Close without saving. Alright, I've reopened my original project, and let's check out the swatches panel. Here's my original custom swatch palette, and here's the new one we just created. Now I've opened another new Inkscape project to show you a couple more examples of how to create a GPL file especially when you can't just import another vector object to use as the basis. In my first example, I'll take a stock photo of a fall scene that I downloaded from Vectezi and use that. Now this is an image file, as we can confirm down at the status bar at the bottom, and we need to use vectorized colors. So a simple way to do that is to go into Path and Trace Bitmap. We want to use a multicolor scan and a detection mode of colors. Let's set the scans to 20 so we get 20 colors. We can see the preview picture below and we can also expand this panel to get a better look at it. Okay, when we're happy, we'll click the apply button. This may take a little bit depending on how much work Inkscape has to do. Now when it's done, the top level here will be our resulting vector colors, so we can slide that over, and we can delete the original image. There we go. Now it's just a matter of using File Save As Again to save this new custom GPL file. Great, I can delete that now and use the same Inkscape project to show you the second example. This time I want four colors in my custom swatch palette, so I can make any kind of vector combination of shapes, and I'll just use four ellipses like this. Now you may have seen me use this resource before from Canva. It lets us choose a starting color, and then will show us what colors look good together with that one. I'll pick purple here in the color wheel, and then use the tetradic option to get my other three complementary colors. I can click the hex code for the first color here, and then select my first ellipse, and go into the Fill and Stroke menu to change the RGBA code to what I have from the clipboard. Then I can go back and forth and do the same process for each of the other three colors. Okay, good, this is ready, and I can use the File Save As process again to save this as a GPL file. Now I'm ready to copy my two new GPL files into the Inkscape user palettes directory. All right, I've reopened my original project and let's check out our swatches. 
Here's our 20 fall colors, and we always seem to get black as a bonus color in these things. And here are the purple complements with the bonus black color too. Now I can have a little fun recoloring my monster. Hey, thanks a lot for watching. I think you'll agree if you use the same colors over and over again in different Inkscape projects, having a custom swatch palette will really make your work easier. If you enjoy this video and my content, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.